Hey, what's up? I'm Gleb Alexandrov here. And in this pretty exciting tutorial from the Realist Lighting series, we'll talk about the post-processing, the ultimate lighting hack, and some kittens. So this is a raw and boring image, and we'll turn it into something spectacular in a moment. Essentially, I'll be showing you a few tricks related to post-processing that will help you to achieve this kind of look. And I feel that the post-processing is the ultimate lighting hack the essence of cheating. So let's go ahead and take a look at this scene. Here we have an old rusty iron tin and just one area light source. You know, it's a pretty simple lighting setup, so let's enter the rendered viewport mode. Let's switch to the camera view by pressing 0 on the numpad. Now we can select the light in the outliner and change its position by pressing G. And we can do all of that without leaving the camera view, which is kind of cool. And to easily rotate the light, let's position the 3D cursor on this sphere and set the pivot mode to 3D cursor. After that, press R and Z and move the mouse around. And that is a very easy way to set up lighting without leaving the camera view. So once again, position the 3D cursor, then switch to pivot mode, then press R to rotate. Easy peasy. Alright, so are you ready to enhance the lighting? So let's apply the depth of field first. Here I'm tweaking the size, but we can't see anything because we need to set the distance. So I'm pressing shift to change it in small increments and I'm just playing with the distance and also with the size. And it's up to you how shallow should be the depth of field. And to make it easier, let's select this empty object as the focal point. This way I'll know exactly where is the focal point. Okay, and now let's tweak the film emulation in the color management tab. First of all, you can experiment with exposure and gamma and obviously this will affect the final look of the lighting. And speaking about looks, you can apply different looks or different types of film by going to this menu and you can choose the Kodachrome film or something else. And it will transform the tone mapping as if you're taking a photo with an old camera, for example. And you can scrub through the looks by holding Ctrl and using mouse wheel. And let's set the gamma back to 1. And let's remove the look and let's use the film emulation. I love how it looks, it kind of obliches the image when you raise the gamma. And that's exactly what I want, because I think that the film response to lighting helps us to fight the digital lifeless look. Okay, now we can tweak the RGB curves. Here I'm cranking up the curve to make it brighter. For example, maybe I just want to make shadows brighter. So raise the lower end of the curve. Of course, it will bleach the image a bit. You may or may not want it. And of course, you can apply all kinds of weird transformations if you're going for the artistic look. And you can also play with the individual channels like the blue one. Here I'm cranking up the starting point to add the blue tint to the shadows. And that looks pretty good to me. And you can play with another mode like Reference Rendering Transform or RRT. But personally, I love the retro vibe that a film emulation gives. That's why I'll stick to the film emulation. And the next step would be to add the chromatic aberration or the lens distortion. Press Shift A, select Distort, Lens Distortion, and insert it. And to showcase what this effect does, I'm gonna apply the large amount of dispersion, even more. And you see that it looks like a glitch of the camera. And we will apply only a small dose of this glitch. And in computer graphics, small things really matter. Even if the effect will be subliminal, the viewer will still pick it up. And these little things really contribute to realistic lighting. So I've rendered the image, I'm gonna save it somewhere. And after that, let's launch Krita and continue post-processing our image in 2D. As I've said, that's an ultimate hack. So let's drag and drop it to Krita. And I'm gonna rename it right away. I'm gonna name it Image. Hmm? And in a moment I'll show you how to create the light diffusion effect. So let's duplicate the layer and apply the Gaussian Blur filter. And let's set it to something like 15, maybe? It will work well, I guess. Press OK. And now I'm gonna set the blending mode to soft light. And it creates a slightly dreamy look. And let's tweak the curves by pressing Ctrl M. And I'm gonna brighten the shadows a bit, because right now I think it's too dark. So raise the curve and create the second point to bring the highlights down a touch. Now we can compare the effects before and after by clicking on the visibility icon. I will also lower the opacity of this layer attach because I don't want it to be so dreamy. Now it's time for adding the lens flares. I'm dragging the lens flare pin G and creating the new layer. 
Now I'm moving it and changing the layer blending mode to addition. This way the lens flare will enhance the brightness of the underlying layer. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start duplicating it. I'm pressing Ctrl T to make it a bit smaller. Then I'm duplicating it once again. And this is a pretty simple process. Just duplicate, move, duplicate, move and so on. With very little effort spent, we created, or rather hacked, uh, the awesome lens flares. And that's the superpower of editing things in 2D. Some things are so much easier to create this way. Okay, to keep it nice and clean, I'm gonna create the group layer and move all these lens flares to this layer. And the blending mode got reset for some reason, let's set it to addition once again. Now let's create the new layer and call it paint because in a moment we'll be painting the lights. Yes, my friend, once again, it's about cheating. Let's pick this soft brush, switch to overlay mode and start painting the lights. It's a very freestyle, very artistic process. So take your time and paint the light where you think it should be. Usually I'm paying attention to the edges of the model and to the protruding parts, where I think the light will affect the object. And if you feel like a rock star today, you can try painting the fancy shadow pattern, for example. And I'm laying a few more strokes, and I think that looks really awesome. I'm really happy with the enhancements so far. And let's move on to the next step. And I just want to show you some of my best paintings up to date. This is epic stuff. Much better than my 3D renders, I guess. Battle robots. And I hope you relaxed for a moment. And now let's return to our post-processing. The next step is to add the dust, because dust makes everything look more believable. No matter what you make, if the air has some thickness to it, the lighting in general will be perceived as much more realistic. So once again, let's switch to the Add Blending Mode, and I will mirror the dust layer horizontally for no particular reason. Now press M and boost the contrast to leave only the brightest bits of dust intact. Here I'm creating the shaped curve, the usual stuff to boost the contrast. And when I'm satisfied, I'm clicking OK, and I think that the dust looks a little bit too thick. What we can do here is erase a part of it. So I press the eraser button, and now I'm just removing the part of the dust. OK, looking cool. And this dust effect usually provides such a big improvement. It's almost a magical thing, especially if you're doing dusty, grungy and post-apocalyptic stuff. And now I'm gonna go ahead and continue playing with the thickness of the atmosphere. Let's add the new layer with the overlay blending mode and pick the soft brush with the white color. Start painting the glow. Try to imagine where the light is passing through the atmosphere. Obviously, the air has some thickness to it. So when the light is shining through it or bouncing over the bright objects like these metal surfaces, the air starts to glow. I find it to be a very important lighting detail, and together with the tiny dust particles, it will create a layer of awesomeness on top of your original lighting. Ok, and for the next step, I'm gonna mirror the whole image horizontally. I do it quite often to check the composition and the balance of the image. Alright, so let's create the new layer and paint the light streaks. In case of this lighting setup, the light rays will hit the object from the left, so I'm painting the light streaks. And after I've finished doing it, I mirror the image horizontally once again. Now let's create a new layer and call it Vignette. Choose a brush with its soft edges, switch to the overlay mode, and start darkening the edges. This post-processing trick helps you to drag viewer's eye towards the focal point of the image, and also it creates the additional gradients, and the gradients are cool. And I'm not even speaking about retro vibe, the beautiful retro vibe. Of the vignette effect. And one of the last things I'm going to show you is the film grain. Drag and drop the film grain image, lower the opacity and set the blending mode to overlay. Unsurprisingly, the film grain is one of these invisible effects that will still highly influence the final look. Here I'm tweaking the opacity and usually I set something like 50 or maybe 75%. Ironically, usually we try to fight with the noise produced by the render engine but here we create an additional noise instead. And even if you don't see the effect, it will boost the realism, believe me. Ok, now let's add the filter layer. It's like an adjustment layer in Photoshop. And as usual, I'm gonna rename it to color, correct? Yes, I'm nerd. Then right click on it and select properties. And what we can do here is play with the contrast of the final image. I feel like we should crank up the contrast a touch. 
But if you disagree with me, uh, feel free to wash out uh, the blacks, for example. It's a pretty cool stuff too, but let's just crank up the contrast this time. It will look cool, I guarantee. And you can also play with the color. For example, you can add the bluish tint to the shadows. Mm, honestly, I think that looked awesome, even without the color correction. So I'll just leave it as it is. And that pretty much concludes the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's recap the steps. This was a raw and boring and flat lighting. We got started by adding the depth of field. And after that, we played with the film emulation in the color management. Then we added a chromatic aberration effect or the lens distortion. Then we made a switch to Krita and crushed it with a light diffusion. After that, it was a matter of adding the lens flares. And of course, painting the light using the soft brush. Usual trick. The next very important step was to add a layer of dust. And the layer of glow. Because the air has some thickness to it. The next step was to create the light rays. In 2D that's an easy thing to do. Okay, so we darkened the edges a bit to create a vignette effect. And added the glorious film grain. I hope you are able to see it. Because I don't see it. Oh, I'm just kidding. And the last step was to add a little bit of color correction. To boost the contrast and to beautify the final image. Okay, guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial from Realistic Lighting Series. That was Gleb Alexandrov for CreativeShrimp.com. Thanks for watching, I appreciate you, and we will change the world of computer graphics. <laughs> the Lighting Project is a manifesto.